Hello and welcome to another edition of Personal Health and Fitness. I'm your host, Chad Marshak. Our program today is here in Springfield, Illinois at Fitness for All. We're going to be talking to Troy Well, who's the owner of Fitness for All, about fitness equipment. It's closing in on the new year. A lot of people are going to make those new year resolutions. So I thought today would be a great opportunity to learn more about fitness equipment. If you're in the market for it, Fitness for All has a lot of great products that uh, you might be interested in. Troy? Welcome to the program. Chad, appreciate it, appreciate it. We've been in the fitness business for a hell of a long time, over yeah. 20 years now. Yeah, and I know, keep it down, keep it down. <laughs> I know you've been uh, in this field selling fitness equipment right. for a long time and right. uh, worked with a lot of people in the community, um, not only here in Springfield, Illinois, but also in Peoria, uh, Quincy. Quincy, Illinois, yep. and, yep. and uh, just in the business for a long time. Right. We've got a lot of great information. I thought we'd educate the community um, about fitness equipment yep. and we're going to start off with treadmills yep. um, number one piece I love treadmills we have treadmills at our uh, studio yep. at Body Symmetry um, most people can walk right and let's if I'm coming in to if I'm interested in the treadmill for example I come in here what are you going to teach me what do I need to know well, it's like it's like when someone comes to you to do the personal training. You're you got to ask a lot of questions. You got to find mm -hmm. out, you know, how it's going to be used, uh, whether they're walkers or runners. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we want to know the kind of the heaviest person maybe that's going to use it in the family. Right. Uh, and then you know, we want to know whether they have bad knees, what their what their space is, is it mm -hmm. limited, you know, as far as space, because in our stores we have thirty plus treadmills to choose from. So you know, we, we ask a lot of questions, just like you as a personal trainer, mm -hmm. before you just put someone on a workout program, you have to ask a lot of those questions. Sure. And then we zero in, and we zero in on a couple of models that we would recommend that's mm -hmm. going to fit their budget. Because treadmills, you know, they, you can go from $500 to, you know, $7,000 for, for a home treadmill. But you know, we zero in, you know, with our store, we, we try to stay in that $1,500 plus mm -hmm. to get a good durable treadmill. So sure. and, and what we have here, I mean, it's, you know, when someone comes in, you have what we call solid frame treadmills, mm -hmm. and then you have fold-up models. Okay. You know, now, I know in the old days, the fold-up fold -up models were pretty much crap. Well, and the reason so. why is the, thing, the problem with a fold-up treadmill back then was is, uh, mm -hmm. you have moving joints. Right. And then you had a floating deck. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for a walker, it was fine, but if you've mm -hmm. got someone jogging or running, you just got a lot of movement in the treadmill. Uh, it wasn't sturdy. Ten right. years ago, I would, I would just like you, I would have told people, stay away from a fold-up treadmill. Nowadays, you know, with technology and everything, they just they have advanced them and made them a lot more solid. Right. Uh, right. In the Midwest, it's not really an issue because most people have the space in their home mm -hmm. for a solid frame treadmill, and, and we'll always recommend that. But you know, like in your bigger cities where you people have you know a one bedroom apartment, you know, sure. that's where the fold up treadmills really come into play. Right. So, or if you got you know an area where it's a walk area mm -hmm. and where you just when it's not being used and you just want you know you don't want this to be sticking out in the middle of the room. That comes into play. Hold also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the bells and whistles on treadmills? Like, you know, if I'm looking at a treadmill, obviously I've been in the business for a long time, but let's say I don't know anything about treadmills. Right. And you've got to consider the belts. I mean, I know there are special belts or orthopedic belts. Mm -hmm. You have to consider the width, the length of the treadmill. You have to consider the motor. Most people, it's you know, gobbledygook. They don't right. understand anything about right. the, the demands placed on a walker versus a runner. They don't understand uh, the features in terms of the the different programs that you can program. I mean, right. a lot of the upper end models and a lot of the lower end models have 1,500 programs yep. you could, uh, you know, program into the to the unit yep. and use. Well, touch on the belts. You know, mm -hmm. years ago the belts were 16, 18 inches. Now right. the norm on the width of these belts are 20 inches. Okay. Uh, the length is anywhere from 54 to 63 inches. Okay. Well, it's pretty much. You know, I'll tell someone that's a walker, a 54 to 57 inch belt's fine. Mm -hmm. But you get someone six foot plus that's going to run six, seven mile an hour. They want that more. They want that length too. Right. Just so they don't. They, and it's more mm -hmm. of a comfort level. Sure. And I tell people all the time, do you need a wider or longer belt? Well, you really don't, because your foot plant on a treadmill is usually just kind of in the, it, it, the, yeah. the, the middle of this treadmill. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It's not like you're going back and forward too much. Okay. It's just psychological. It's just. It just keeps people, they just feel more comfortable sure. so they have that room to mess with. Mm -hmm. uh, and then far as with the motors, you know, you, I, we don't carry anything in our store that has under a two and a half horsepower motor. Okay. The reason why is, and, I get, and this is the main thing I have to stress with our customers all the time, walkers are literally harder on a treadmill than a runner. And the reason why is you get someone, and I always use this term, you know, if I got a 100-pound lady 
walking on a treadmill one, two mile an hour, that motor is pulling that weight because- That drag. The drag, because mm -hmm. like we talked about earlier, your foot is on there for a longer period of time. Right. So that motor's working hard. Mm -hmm. But I can take a 200 pound man running on the treadmill, Mm -hmm. He's hardly putting any stress at all on the motor because the motor is running at a higher speed mm -hmm. and plus their foot is touching and coming right mm -hmm. back up. They're just harder on the structure of the treadmill because okay. of the pounding, you know, mm -hmm. the pounding of a runner. Right. Uh, so there's where we, you know, that's one of the questions we ask. And then, you know, the three horsepower motors, I just like that for the, the, the walker, uh, jogger. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is it's just, it's, that's the biggest motor they make for a home treadmill. Right. We recently had a true treadmill that we had for 14 years at our studio that we just got rid of uh, that had over 7,000 miles on it, and it was predominantly used by walkers. Right. So the, the length of life of a treadmill can right. be, I mean, there you go, 14. Short lived. Yeah, yeah. very short lived. Yeah. yeah. And we see that a lot, with, especially with the true brand. Well, you know, so. mm -hmm. well, 14 years is, I think, a long life yeah, for a treadmill. Yeah, very good. I'm, and we've, I've seen them come mm -hmm. in, you know, being mm -hmm. in the industry over 20 years, yeah. I've seen them come in, you know, 15, you know, 20 years plus with, you know, 15, mm -hmm. 20,000 miles on them, still running condition. Right. You know, and that's what you get. I mean, mm -hmm. that's why we tell everybody when you buy a treadmill, don't think of it as a 90-day commitment. You know, what, you know what health and fitness sure. is. It's long term. Right. So if you, if you make a commitment, buy something that's going to last. Get you little, 10 years, you know? Right. It'd be a little better to, to spend a little bit more money that has a better motor, yeah. better frame, yep. that's going to last you a great, you know, long period of time, right. 14 years. Proof well, is in the pudding. While the people that come in our store, they say they had that four or $500 treadmill. That was a great purchase. There was nothing wrong with buying that treadmill. It didn't last. We're the next step. Right. You know, look at something that now is going to give you that longevity. So. Okay. Any other features that uh, are bells or whistles? Uh, that we that a consumer would need to be aware of before they actually uh, purchase a treadmill anything any other consideration well I mean most of all treadmills nowadays have what we call contact heart rate okay and a lot of, that's what these silver tabs on just right. about every treadmill we if we went down the whole line just about every one of them has that that's a nice feature to have if uh -huh. someone just says you know hey after three or four minutes I'd like to just reach down here Kind of see if I'm in my general heart rate range. Right. You don't is, necessarily have to wear the heart rate monitor. I know we have a lot of clients at Body Symmetry that, that hate wearing these things. Right. And some people don't mind. Right. Now you may get a more accurate reading if you Push actually, it. you're going to have a constant reading. You can right. just look at it and glance versus grabbing onto the contacts here, waiting for 10, 15 seconds until it actually measures your heart rate. Right. So you don't have to wear these, this now. You can actually no. grab the contacts, which yep. is nice for those individuals that don't want to wear this. Some people, obviously a lot of people in our society, this isn't going to fit around them. Well, it's adjustable. Yeah. Right. I know it's adjustable, but <laughs> if you're in excess oh, of 300 pounds, yeah. it may not right. work. Right. So you still have this feature here, the ability to actually monitor your heart rate right. and it's accurate reading versus strapping this on where you get right. a constant display. Well, and that just goes underneath the clothing, you know, just underneath sure. the chest. But I'll recommend a heart rate monitor yeah. to someone that comes in as just, you know, a uh, heart patient, uh, high blood pressure. Sure. Because they really Safer. should, be, they, they should mm -hmm. really be watching their heart rate at all times when they're yep. on that. But, you know, the average person, yeah, once you, once you know what it feels like to be in your target zone, and I tell people all this time, you know, if you get 70% of your maximum heart rate, once you've learned what it feels like, you, yeah. you know, you yeah. know. And I always tell people, if you can't talk without taking, you know, if you, you can't talk, you have to take a deep breath. The talk test, that's what it's called. Exactly. Right. Well, there you go. So yeah. I'm going to use that term next time. But you know, <laughs> that's, you know, that's why I tell people, you know, you're out of your target zone. Okay. As far as other features, just about every treadmill now has programs. Mm -hmm. And they go with just the basic programs. Interval training, probably the number one program. Mm -hmm. I push it all the time. doesn't matter if it's a treadmill, elliptical, bike. I try to tell people to do interval training. And interval training, you know, it's just maybe, you know, walk at a, a faster pace and an incline for two or three minutes and then take it down for a couple of minutes. Maybe walk flat at a slower speed. Right. So varying that intensity is exactly. going to give your, your body's going to be uh, confused and more stimulated yep. in terms of calorically. Well, on the treadmill, will automatically do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you set it for a 30 minute walk, mm -hmm. put it on interval course. Right. Don't even look at the time. Watch TV. Do whatever. Get your mind off of that 30 minutes. And the treadmill is going to change speed and inclines automatically. And, yeah. you know, and then you're at the end, you're going to see you, you know, walk a couple a great, miles and burn so many calories. A great way to become more fit yeah. faster. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just good. For, I think it's, I think it's it breaks important. breaks up the monotony, too. I think it's important to do that. Otherwise, sure. you mean people that come in here and say, oh, you know, I had a treadmill for two or three months. I never really didn't see any results. You know, I saw a lot at the beginning, and then I started, mm -hmm. well, what are you doing? Are you changing right. up, or are you just getting on there every day and walking at the same pace, same sure. incline? 
And that's what's nice about the features there. Real quick question about the belts. Um, <clears throat> do most treadmills, middle of the road to upper end, come with orthopedic belts? No, I mean, you know, True is a founder of the orthopedic belt, just okay. like True is a founder of heart rate controlled treadmills. Okay. You know, they were kind of the leader in that in those two areas. The orthopedic belt, you know, when people say orthopedic, the first thing they think is, oh, it's, it's like a pair of shoes. It's sure. going to be more comfortable to my feet. Yeah. I've never been, that's never been proven to me right. as a salesperson that sells true treadmills that the orthopedic has that type of benefit. I think the biggest benefit to an orthopedic belt is, for a runner, better grip. Uh, okay. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. You know, some people say, oh, they seem to be a little bit quieter. You know, in a big store like this, I can't tell the difference, but a lot yeah. of people, when they have them in their homes, they can and tell it's the just difference. because it's a thicker belt, right. must sum down that noise level mm -hmm. down. Uh, but I like it. I mean, a lot of people get in here and the first thing they do is like, oh, yeah, this feels like I get a little bit better grip. Mm -hmm. On the treadmill, okay. but you have, you know, then you have treadmills that have the two ply belt, you know, so they don't put orthopedic belts on a, on a commercial treadmill, and the reason why is because they hold too much heat. Okay. So okay. that's so why you'll see, yeah, you'll never see an orthopedic belt on a commercial treadmill for okay. that reason. So. Okay. And the big difference between a commercial treadmill versus a residential treadmill: would an uh, individual home, individual at home, ever need a commercial grade treadmill? No. And we've had people over the years that come in and say, "Oh, I go to the health club, and this is the treadmill I want." First of all, we're like, oh, that's a great treadmill. And then when I tell them it's a five, six thousand dollar treadmill, they're overwhelmed by that. Sure. I tell people all the time, you can come in here and get just as good quality treadmill for basically that twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred range, right? And get the top of the line home treadmill. Okay. Uh, right. And it's going to have the exact same features. It's going to have the exact same feel. The difference between yeah. home and commercial is this is built for three or four people to use every day in your home. And the commercial is built for you know twelve, twenty four hours use. Right. Right. And uh, and to me, that's overkill for a home. Yeah. So I agree. That's that's a good point to make. Yep. Anything else on the treadmills we want to talk about today before we move on to the other pieces? No, I just like I said, what, you know, what we've talked about is, you know, this is if anybody walks in a store, yeah, we know they can use the treadmills. The most natural way of exercising sure. is walking and running. For someone that comes in and says, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've been a runner for years. I got bad knees. I got bad ankles. Right. That's when we're going to go and look at the elliptical machines okay. and then also the seated ellipticals. Sure. So. And that's what we're going to move yep, to next. Yep, so yep. let's go ahead and head over in that direction. Well, um, you know, the difference between a treadmill and elliptical is it's, you know, <clears> all <throat> ellipticals have, all the different manufacturers have different ways of designing it. You have okay. what we call front drive. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them have a rear drive and some are called center drive. We get the number one question that gets asked is on ellipticals, which one's better? There's not one that's any better. Mm -hmm. It's just, if you look at the treadmills, <clears> they all look pretty much the same. You look at the ellipticals, all different shapes and sizes. Well, they've really changed over the yeah, last three, four they years, have. haven't I mean, they? they? I mean, it's just, you know, and they're trying to get them more compact. You know, one thing about this, you know, the brand here, Octane, is this is all they do. Mm -hmm. They don't make treadmills. They don't make bikes. They concentrate strictly on ellipticals. And, uh, you know, they had a home run with it. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. the by far the best upper and lower body elliptical machine out there. And they made it compact. Yeah, I've used them. I really like them. Yeah, well... You know, I always laugh because I've seen ellipticals, you know, and we have ellipticals here in our store, other brands, mm -hmm. that it's actually kind of difficult to get on and off mm -hmm. in elliptical. One thing about the Octane is you're, you're walking on the back of it here. It has right. a very low step-up height. Mm -hmm. A lot of ellipticals, you have to be careful because you've got a 12, 15-inch step-up height. Well, that's a high step-up height. Yeah. But at the same time, if you only have a 7-foot ceiling <clears throat> in your home, and you're six foot. Well, next thing you know, you're you're you have a you know uh, a ceiling height problem. Right. So those are the questions again we ask. Okay, right. you're buying an elliptical. Where's it going? What's your ceiling height? This mm -hmm. is one of the first things we have to ask. Yeah. Because we've had it where people bought ellipticals and didn't even think about, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to be a foot up off the ground. Right. So you know you can step up on this, and it's basically you know like I said, it's a walking, running motion. Right. But with no impact. My feet never leave the platform. So this is the, 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 this accommodates that. You know, like I said, someone that's been a runner or mm -hmm. maybe a lady that's done aerobics for years, bad knees, bad ankles, right. they can still get that it's rush a, of walking it's and running. A, it's a little more hip dominant, so the joints don't have to, mm -hmm. and the knees don't have to work no. um, quite as hard. Um, let's go ahead and check this out. So if I'm up here and I'm using the, the elliptical here, I can actually vary my stride length as well. Is that correct? You have miles that you have that, and the one we're showing here okay. has the adjustable stride. Okay. When, and what that and what we mean by adjustable stride is, mm -hmm. it's like when you go from a walk to a run, right? Your stride length, length you know, lengthens up, and that's mm -hmm. what you have here. Right. Not everybody has the same length for a stride. Right. When you walk or you run, stride length is gonna 
you know, be different for everyone, right. depending on how long their legs are, yeah. you know, how powerful and strong they are, just their own body mechanics, natural body mechanics is going to dictate your stride length. Yep. So you can change that on a lot of these models. Yeah, well, you, you basically have, there's, you know, in our store, we have four or five different models that have mm -hmm. what we call adjustable stride. Mm -hmm. Most ellipticals have what we call fixed stride length. Okay. And they're going to be anywhere between that 19 and mm -hmm. 23 inches. So you I mean, can buy that model depending on whether yeah. or not, you know, you can just like test driving a car, if it fits your body and you like it and it works well for you, then go for it. Yeah, and most people, when they get on elliptical machines, mm -hmm. most people just go at basically what we call a walking mm -hmm. and a, a jog speed. Mm -hmm. So they don't need that adjustable stride. Mm -hmm. But if you, you know, if someone comes in here, like we had a family here the other day that come in and, you know, dad was six foot four, yeah. mom was like five foot two. There was a big difference in stride length and heights in the family, right. and he was a runner. Well, okay. he didn't feel comfortable on a fixed stride length because he felt like it was too choppy. Right. You know, they actually went with this particular model just because he can lengthen a lot on the yeah. train. Right. And you don't have to hold on to the handles up here if you want fixed handles. Just focus a little bit more on upper, lower body. Rather, you can certainly do that of course as well. You can. Well, mm -hmm. and I tell people if you get tired, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's one of the things you can do is just take your arms off. Right. You know, one of the big features to ellipticals too over a treadmill is, is mm -hmm. not only can you go forward. You can go backwards. You can go backwards. You yeah. can go backwards on a treadmill. Sure. We don't recommend it, but you can go backwards. And the, the benefits of going backwards is you get yeah. a lot more of the glutes and hamstrings. Right. Uh, you know, there's there's definitely you know a lot of studies out there that shows right. you burn more calories going backwards than you do forward. Interesting enough on a treadmill though, a lot of knee rehab protocols actually have their patients walking backwards. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was just on, not running. Yeah, but right. it shows, you know, it just shows different. And then, sure. you know, one thing about ellipticals is, is uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and a lot of them have a feature what they call, you know, this one's particular program is called the X mode. Mm -hmm. And what that does, that runs <laughs> someone through a complete workout where it tells you go fast forward okay. or squat down, go reverse. Mm -hmm. And then again, it's just like we talked about the interval training. It just breaks it up. So. Right. And you have some handles here. Mm -hmm. Show me, uh, show me. Well, how these work. you're the expert in this area. Okay. You know that, you know, there's just a lot of things you can do on the machines. You've got okay. rotator cuff problems, you right. know, if someone wants just to sit here and do some toning exercises. So that's just a feature on this particular machine. Yeah, if you want comes, to do some rowing patterns, some pressing patterns. Yeah, and it actually comes with an actual booklet that shows you all the different exercises you can right. do right. just with just bands. Right, good. You know, right, rotation stuff. You haven't even shown any of this stuff. I know. You need me to come here and teach you how to use this. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you're the expert in that area. <laughs> <laughs> but Fair now, enough. like what you're hearing right now, that's the machine going back to the original stride, stride line. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it automatically does that. It's pretty quiet, actually. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. And, and uh, what's nice about this, too, is you can put this on what we call a smart stride. Mm -hmm. So when you're going and all of a sudden you start going faster, it recognizes that. It knows it once you want to go to a running speed. Okay. And it automatically lengthens for you. Oh, nice. So. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and move on to this next octane piece. A um, little bit different here. Why don't you uh, talk to me about this? Because you have, obviously not everybody can walk. You may have somebody right. who's a paraplegic or somebody that has uh, other orthopedic rehab. limitations, yep. some type of rehab program, or yep. they can't use their lower extremity. So they need to use something like this, where right. you, you can obviously use your legs here, but you don't have to. Right, and what this particular piece here is, is you know, it's. It's from the Octane family. Right. Uh, you know, they, they wanted to kind of get more into the, helping that, um, you know, I don't, I want to say older clientele, people like we said with limitations on, you know, upper and lower body. We mm -hmm. found this has been a piece where if someone comes in our store that's, uh, you know, it's really can't walk, just standing alone. Yeah. With, you know, they got a lot of stress. Uh, it's about the only piece that they can actually do. Okay. And I've seen people's, you know, eyes light up when we get them on this piece and they've actually are just happy they found something they can finally do. Finally do. Uh, mm -hmm. But basically what it is, it's, you know, it's, it's called, it, these are called the X-Ride. It is okay. a seated elliptical machine. Okay. You know, it's not like a recumbent bike where you have that circular movement. You have yeah. more of that egg shape. So it puts a little bit less stress on the hip joints, your knees. Kind of a hybrid Ex elliptical. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you have the upper body. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about it is, you know, you can adjust this seat up and down, you know, to adjust to your height. Right. And you, it's just kind of like a bike. You want to make sure when you're on it, you don't have a full extension. You want to okay. keep a slight bend, right. put a little stress. Mm -hmm. And plus you have the capability of adjusting this. The seat. Yeah. And what that does is a lot of people like to feel more upright. Uh, I mm -hmm. personally like to have it set back. Probably just a depends bit. also if you the girth of your stomach too. If you have a yeah. larger stomach, you're going to want to probably tilt it back. Yeah. If it's more upright, it may press on your stomach and not be so comfortable. So right. the cool thing about a lot of uh, 
you know, exercise machines anymore, ellipticals especially, that they've really fabricated them in such a way that allow, you know, accommodates a greater percentage of the yeah. population. Yeah, and you have to because, I mean, unfortunately, you know, here in the United States, you know, we have a lot of different shapes and sizes and, sure. uh, and they've learned that. And, that's, and, that, and that's one thing I do like about Octane is, you know, with them only doing concentrate in one area they right. really are just trying to do this the right way that's their and, deal and that's yeah. their deal you know uh well let's talk about the f uh, how this puppy works why don't you show me well the main well, thing is no, that's what I'm sorry. Yeah. the main thing is you can you know you can see that it's got a very low step up height okay it's easy to get on and off so easy to walk through if somebody can't swing their legs over something they can simply yeah what i'll tell people is just put one arm forward little okay. one back so it kind of, you have an open space here on right. the side to get on either side but like I said, when you do this, you want to make sure you have a slight bend. You have a very big foot plant here, uh, okay. so you can adjust your, you know, have your feet up higher, lower, wherever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. But it's a combination of upper and lower body movement. Mm -hmm. It's the same as an elliptical, a standing elliptical. The difference here, I'm just in a seated position yeah. now. So now I don't have any stress, no weight bearing on anything. Exactly. This is a very, very light resistance, which you can go up to where you can do almost strength training. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to build some strength up in your legs, you have those programs on this particular model to do that and also with the upper body. Right. If my lower body, if I'm going along here and you know, and I'm starting to get tired, instead of stopping, maybe just take your feet off and, and just do your, your upper, upper body, body only. Mm -hmm. You know? So for those individuals that can't use their legs, um, you can actually you can place your legs up here or you can place them on the platform down here. Of course you can. Yeah. Well, I don't like it there because I'm always afraid that's gonna come back and hit them. I mean right. that's what really kind of what with these pegs board. are here okay. is and it, you know, and to be honest with you, this is pretty comfortable to have your okay. feet up. It's almost like a lazy boy chair. And what's cool here, you've got uh, some features called workout boosters. So if you want to focus, say, more on like a, a push pull action for right. say chest and back exercises, mm -hmm. you can actually press this uh, button here and uh, and it's more focused on that action, correct? Yeah, and what you're doing is you're just you use your upper body only. And what it does is on that particular uh, program is it starts off easy. It counts up to 30 minutes, right. or uh, 30 minutes, 30 seconds to a minute. And mm -hmm. what it does is the, the resistance just gets harder and harder and harder. Okay. And at the very end, it's almost like you can't even go any farther. And then all of a sudden, it goes back down. Okay. It's interval training. Sure. But it, what it is, it's strength, it's strength training. You know, it's right. like doing a, you know, like mm -hmm. doing a set. A I chest press, yep. and then boom, you go back down. You get that minute rest. Sure, sure. Basically, what we've been teaching people for years, you know. And so that's and that's a cool feature about this in terms of the the interval training we talked about on the treadmill. You mm -hmm. still have that option. Um, most pieces of cardiovascular equipment that you can use, and a lot of people don't realize that you can vary the tempo yep. with pretty much everything. Yeah. Well, and like you know, with a elliptical and, a, and like a seat elliptical, mm -hmm. it's resistance. Yeah. On a treadmill, you have speed and you have Grade, incline. Right. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, there's, you have a lot of options, you know. Sure. But yeah, you just this is like I said, you can just see it's a very comfortable, you know, position that mm -hmm. we have here. So, yeah. Troy, we've got about five minutes left. Anything else on the ellipticals before we move on to the bike? I think the main thing is is just the, you know the tool here is just for that walker runner. Okay. That just has you know let's think about it long term. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're 40 now and you got bad knees, you know it, that might not go away when you're 50. So get something like an elliptical that's going to get put less stress in your body. Instead of just tearing yourself down every day when you do your workouts. So, great. All right. Let's move this puppy up. Yep. First of all, it's pretty easy to move because oh, it yeah. has wheels. So we've yeah. got a got the handle there on the back. Recumbent bike, and boy, this is another huge cardio piece of equipment that people use around the world, actually. So, yeah. Um, let's talk about what someone might want to consider when uh, purchasing a bike. Well, I mean, you have really three styles of bikes out there. You have recumbent bikes. Okay. You have an up the old, you know, the old and this style. is the recumbent bike. It's a recumbent bike, right. and then you have upright bikes, and then mm -hmm. you have the dual action bikes. Okay. You know, in all the you know, the years I've been in the industry, since the recumbent bikes come out, you just see less and less upper body, you know, as far as upright bikes being sold. And it's not so much that it's just a given that these are a lot more comfortable, yeah. but you can actually get a, a, just an overall better cardiovascular workout on a recumbent bike. And then again, it's just because you get more range of motion in your mm -hmm. lower body. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, no one's ever invented a nice, comfortable, upright bike seat. <laughs> they I mean, have it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and that's what that's what the big, you know, the big thing about recumbent bikes mm -hmm. is you know, they make them to where you have what we call step overs and they also have them for walkthroughs for someone that maybe just So the walkthroughs are actually Well, it's more it's it's very low to the ground, so gotcha. someone can just put their foot through here. Right. Uh, this is the Life Core, you know, uh, company. Their, their big thing is this is just probably the most compact recumbent bike. Very, very popular. The, the footprint, the space yeah, it takes 44 up is inches. Like, no, that's, that's their, that's their right. claim to fame. 44 inches. 
Uh, right. So someone that doesn't have a lot of space right. that wants to do cardiovascular training. So four feet by two, two and a half feet, and you're good to go. Oh, yeah. So. And, and the nice thing about this particular model, you don't have to plug it in. If you have 10 square feet, you're good to go. Yeah. Right. This is all self-generating. So when I start pelling, it automatically Oh, that's really on. nice because a lot of people, you know, they don't have a place to plug in their right. bike because of the electronics. So this yeah. actually generates, you're, you're generating your own power. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, that's what the lights are on for now. So they, <laughs> I've got them doing it. But, uh, okay. and that's the nice thing about a recumbent bike is then again, it's kind of like the seat elliptical. Okay. You're in a comfortable position. Yeah. You know, I can adjust the seat, you know, basically back and forth to get mm -hmm. to my length. And at the same time, I can also right. adjust my back seat. Right. The, the big benefits to a lot of these bikes now, they come out with these mesh back seats. Mm -hmm. That just gives you a little bit better ventilation. Sure. You, you don't sweat as bad. Plus, I like it because you have a flex to it. So it doesn't matter what my body weight is, it automatically forms to my weight. Oh, that's good. So, one thing I want to talk about in terms of mechanics when you're on a, uh, whether it's a recumbent bike or an upright bike, is I see so many people, they look very uncomfortable on a bike because their knees are scrunched up to their chest. Yep. Let's talk about where your knees should be. So, even if you're not in the market to buy a bike, Let's pay attention here to where your knees should be. You have a couple of different options. Well, primarily your knees are going to be almost just a slight bend. Yeah, and what I, what I tell out. people is just take your bike, you know, and go all the way to the full length. Yep. And then look and see if you still have a bad, you know, a bend yeah. in your knee. Sure. If you're walking out like this, every time you're going to, to, to reach out, mm -hmm. you're going to eventually hyperextend your knee and okay. put a lot of stress on there. I've, you know, I see people that like to get a little closer where their knees are always at bent. One nice thing about that is that's good for someone that has a bad knee and they want to get a little better range of motion in their knee mm -hmm. because literally you're getting, you can see my knees are coming up higher now towards my chest, but if I adjust to where, where I should be, I'll see it's not coming up as high. Right. So if you're maybe rehabbing from a knee replacement, then you can vary the distance uh, in your seat back right. depending on if you need a little bit more range of motion in your joint. If your physical therapist says, hey, this right. is what I, how I want you to use the bike, then you can go for it. Yep. Troy, we're about out of time. We got less than a minute left yep. in the program. Anything else on the bikes before we close? No, I think, like I said, I think we touched on, the, you know, basically how to, you know, to adjust it. And, uh, you know, a lot of the features that are on the bikes are the same features you have on the treadmills and ellipticals. Right. I know a lot of people are interested in fitness equipment. Hopefully we'll do a show in the near future and talk yep. about strength training equipment. More specifically, we covered the cardio basis today yep. with the treadmills, the ellipticals, and the recumbent bikes. Yep. So appreciate you. Helping no, me out no, today. I Thanks, appreciate Troy. It. I appreciate Thank it very, very much. much. Thank you very much. So if you have any questions about fitness equipment, check out Fitness for All online, or you can call them. Your, the number and their uh, web address will appear at the end of the program. Thanks again for joining me on another edition of Personal Health and Fitness. Until next time, I'm your host, Chad Marshak. Hey, Quinn and Riley.